Just like last week, this week I gave myself a giant to-do list. Unlike last week, this week I actually got it done. This week I finished a bunch of UI pixel art, as well as some borders and backgrounds, and I created a fully functional shop system. But before we talk about that, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. Let's get into the video. In the last video I had set up the button animation to press whenever you're hovering over it, which makes no sense, because the button should only be pressed when you actually click on the thing. So I corrected that by giving it a hover animation, so now it highlights when your cursor goes over the button, and only presses down on the button when you're actually clicking, which makes a lot more sense. Then I started making some placeholder art for the UI in the game, just some very simple things like uh, the money and, and a bomb icon for bomb parts. But when I got to the stone icon, I really, really didn't like how I had originally drawn it, so I tried to make something a little better, and ended up with this. And since I think that actually looks pretty good, I mean, it's not perfect or anything, but it's probably as good as I can draw, I decided to heck with it. I was just going to make the art now, rather than make placeholder art. The first thing I went back to redo was the bomb, and when I finished, it looked like this. But I had to redo it because I took it to the Discord, and I think it was Ben Brooks who said that it looked like a pomegranate. And they're right, it does look like a pomegranate. <laughs> so I had to go back and redo that, specifically changing the top part of it to make it look more like a manufactured pin, as opposed to a nub coming up from a fruit. And after redoing the bomb and the screw and the nut that were there for the bomb parts icon, it looks like this. Then I went back and redid the wood icon to make it these two planks of old wood. Wood is kind of tricky because it's got grains going horizontally across it, but then among those grains there's a bunch of discoloration and around the edges where it's rotted, specifically because I'm doing old wood, not like brand new fresh wood planks that you'd get at the store, you get these dark discolorations around the edges that are broken off, so I had to try to do that. And for the metal pins that go into the wood, I stole the color from the bomb, and that way hopefully the art kind of has similar colors in it, so since I'm no longer using a color palette because I gave up when I made the ghost, I would at least like the colors to kind of match each other, so the metal from the bomb has to match the metal from this wood icon. After finishing the wood, I went back and remade the money icon, and I figured since I couldn't properly draw paper bills, I decided to go for a coin instead. Coins are pretty simple to make, they're just circles on top of circles on top of circles. And then I just added a little bit of tarnish to it, and some shading. The thing I did have trouble with was even after finishing the coal icon, it just looks like some rocks in a bag. Like, what color is coal? It's black, yeah, but like how do you show black on black without it looking weird? Because the backgrounds are going to be black, so like, they had to be lighter than the backgrounds or else they would just blend in with the backgrounds, so like, what would I do? I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to go back and redo that one. But I'm trying not to waste too much time focusing on one thing for too long because, like the spiders, I could just get engrossed in it and lose days. And I don't want to do that again. The foodstuffs icon, to represent the cooking materials that you have, I wanted that to just be a like mash of cooking related looking things. So there's a cooking oil, and then there's a miscellaneous container with things in it, and then the bread loaf. The first draft of the bread loaf, um, I was really happy with. I even posted it on Twitter, which means, in my head, that means I'm finished. So I posted it on Twitter and was like, hey guys, look, this'll pass, right? Uh, no, no. Um, I thought it looked fine, but as soon as somebody pointed out that the bread looked kind of yellowish green, I realized that I'd, I'd chosen the wrong colors. Bread is difficult because it has to be this golden brown, exactly right kind of color. And golden brown kind of falls in between yellow and brown, obviously. <laughs> I had gone too far into the yellow side. What I did to fix this was go to a, another successful game out there that you might have heard of called Minecraft and just unapologetically stole their colors. All I did was take the colors over and desaturate some of them so that they matched with my game, since my game isn't quite as colorful as Minecraft is. And now it looks like this, and that's good, right? I'm happy with that. No one's gonna look at that and say it's not food stuff. At the end of the last video, all I had made for the background was a black background for the shop menu, and that just looked kind of weird. So my first draft of a background was a crate, like a wooden block box crate that you're looking into as the shop menu. And I tried, uh, but 
it, it's not good. <laughs> it's it's just it's not it, it's weird and awkward and I made it to the wrong size so I had to stretch it out and it just ugh. Anyhow, um, I went back to the drawing board and made stonework borders instead. And I think that looks a lot better. I tweaked it a few times to get it right. I tried to make it so that each brick was kind of popping out a little bit, so on the bottom of each brick there's a couple pixels of a darker color to represent that it's actually elevated off the scene. But putting that in meant that I needed to change the borders for the inventory icons as well, because the wood with the stonework just didn't make any sense. So now everything's stone, and I think I might actually use this style for the subway scene as well, since that scene just looked really weird and awkward. I'm going to go through with the stonework and do the same style over there, and I think that'll make everything kind of fit together, you know? So now that I've gotten everything to look right, I need everything to function properly. So I went in and added the events needed to make a shop system. It's very straightforward, it's just each thing in your inventory gets a global variable to track how many there are in your game. And then when you click to buy, the game checks to see if you have enough money to buy that thing. And if you do, then it'll subtract that amount from your money and then add one to that inventory global variable. The money is also a global variable, so it's basically just subtracting from one and adding to the other. It's very straightforward. When you're selling, it's basically the exact same thing in reverse. Instead of checking to see how much money you have, it checks to see if you have enough of that resource to sell it, and then subtracts by that amount. So that's the basic shop system down. So then I had to add in the upgrade system for the trains, that each station in the train can be upgraded. And for now, it's just a number in our global variables that we'll use later on in the subway scene. I wanted the train upgrade menu to look kind of slick, so what I did was grab the train icon and make it look like it's popping out of a pedestal, using the same colors as the stonework from the border itself. And I think it looks okay. And this essentially works the same way as the original inventory shop. Every time you click to buy an upgrade, it will check to see if you have enough money to buy that upgrade, and then subtract that amount from the money pile. And then when you buy that thing, it ups the number of the global variable for the upgrade number. <laughs> if that makes sense. Basically, inventory systems in games are really simple, just they're really tedious to have all of these different variables added to and subtracted to, and it's very basic stuff, it's just very tedious to put in. So hopefully this video wasn't totally boring. It's not the most interesting subject matter, but without it, games with leveling systems and shop mechanics, they just couldn't exist. So this is the tedious stuff you need to get through in order to have the fun part of the game. And that's all I got done this week. I set a kind of high bar for myself because the past few weeks have been like minor things that don't really get much done, but this shop mechanic is a big chunk done. Which means I'm getting that much closer to the game being finished. There's still the story stuff and a lot more mechanics to fit into the subway system, as well as the utility for the sun character in the train. That all needs to be put into place. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider clicking on that subscribe button. And if you wanted to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside, and it's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk about game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I will see you there.